I'm Spoony, the useless cook, and today I'm going to show you how to make Carbonara. The first thing you want to do is take your pecoroni cheese, this little triangle here, cost me 11 bucks. This dish is not cheap. Now I'm putting some non-slip mat into the bowl so it doesn't move around while I'm grating the cheese to make it easier on me. Now I should have put some under the cutting board as well, so as you can see in the video, it is just moving around a bit. And sorry that my spoon and corner is not moving. I'm having problems with that program and it's making me very, very frustrated. As you see here, the cheese is nice and shredded. I did the whole block. I'm going to put that to the side. I'm going to take care of the pancetta. At first I thought I could tear it to pieces. It worked fine, but it was more hassle. It's very sticky. When I pulled off the plastic, it off the plastic, some of it just, you know, stuck to the plastic. I think whatever, so I started using the kitchen shears on the second piece. And it made it a bit easier, a bit faster. But still, it's really sticky. Now I'm using two packs, and each pack cost seven dollars. So again, this is not a cheap meal. Listen, you could have every now and then. I'm going to try to find ingredients to make it cheaper, more cost effective for more people. Let me come down later down the road. So just keep cutting the pancetta. Pancetta. Not a very easy word to say for me. Pulling off the film. Tore the pancetta has charred off. It's so sticky. Now here it is, pile of pancetta. I great cut all two packs. A lot of work right there. I'm never sure what to show, but I'm showing most of it here. Is why not? It's fun. All right, it's all done. Next, we make the sauce. Now it's very easy. Take two eggs. Now, always be sure to break your eggs on a flat surface, not an edge of wool, so you don't get eggshells in your eggs. Now, you can use two egg yolks in an egg in a whole egg if you want a more richer sauce, but I decided to just use two eggs uh, out of convenience mostly. You want to add the cheese in bit by bit until it's well incorporated, mostly. Doesn't be totally perfect, of course. Just keep stirring and keep stirring. See, there's coming on nicely, getting thicker and thicker. Now you want to do this till it becomes a nice thick paste. Adding a lot here. I'm just going to add a lot of pepper. I'm going to add lots of pepper. Don't be stingy on it. Of course, I'm using fresh ground pepper. Give that a stir. Like you see, it's a nice thick paste. It'd be thicker if you want it. If you want more cheese. Now here's the pasta. I'm using a fancy pasta. This is expensive pasta as well. As you can see, it's kind of rough. It's not smooth, and it's not orange. It's a bit expensive, but it's worth it since I'm using expensive everything else. Might as well use expensive pasta, right? What I'm doing here is taking some olive oil and the pancetta. We're gonna fry it up. Now you want to use a bit of oil because there's not a lot of fat in this, so it won't render out as you're cooking it. You just want to keep moving it around until it's nice and crispy. Now, of course, we're doing this while the pasta is cooking. Of course, when you cook the pasta, you want to use, well, a lot of water. I did have a video of that on my phone, but I dropped my phone in some water and I lost that footage. I'm sorry about that. We're going to see what the pasta looks like after we cook it at least. So just keep moving around, get nice and crispy. Nice and crispy. You hear some popping here and there. As the water, you know, steams out and evaporates. Now, of course, I'm using an electric skillet. 
because it's the biggest skill I have. And it's easier to do record videos with it as well. Now this is the second time I made Kybernera because the first time I made it, I did not like the clips I made. So I spent the bought the greens twice and made it again because I wanted to do better. As you get coming out nicely, you get nice crispy and brown edges on them. Of course, you want to keep moving around so they don't burn. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring. <laughs> Coming around nicely. You see some of the fat coming out, and as the bits begin to dry up on the pan, stick to it, which is fine, that's what you want, that's the tasty goodness that will clean up in a bit. Now the pasta. Now this is a different pan because this is my first time I made it because the clip I had of doing the, doing this with the, adding the sauce got corrupted because my camera overheated and I lost that footage so instead of recording it a third time I decided just to split the footage. So what you want to do here is take the sauce that you made, add some of the pasta water in it, not too much because you don't want to make it too thin. You can add a bit more if you want, it's up to you really. Just get a mix till it's well combined. And of course, you want to make sure your pasta is do it from the from the pot. You don't want to drain it first because you want to make sure the pasta stays nice and wet, and moist. You don't want it to dry out at all. So just add it to the pasta right there. Try to get all of it. And of course, you want to do this off the heat because you don't want to melt the cheese too fast, or it won't become creamy. It'll come stringy. There's enough heat in the pan to melt the to melt the cheese. So let's keep mixing it. Start mixing it. And you can probably see why I don't like this clip because there's stuff in the way. It doesn't look very good. And of course, it's kind of hard to mix in this pan because it's kind of small. But it's the biggest pan I have that's not electric. That's why I don't want to use these clips. But I had no choice now. Yeah, that's coming nice, nicely, it's nice, creamy. But I'm gonna show you the second time I made it, it looks even better. And less messy. So here's the second time I made it. Add the cheese and the pasta. A lot of more pasta water to make it nice creamier. There's more room so I can mix it up better. Plus I'm using a proper tool this time, not tongs. Move it around until it's well mixed. Of course you want to turn off the heat. Because you want to make nice creamy sauce. You want the cheese to melt just right so it's not stringy. It'll still taste good even though the cheese is stringy, it just won't look very good. I still need more practice with the technique to get it perfect, but I'm getting there. Like you see here, it's coming out nicely. It looks even creamier. It looks even better on, my, on this camera because it's closer. Okay. Live and you learn. And once you get to the mix you like, you can serve. I'm gonna go tong them on out. Like you see, the cheese ain't perfect, but it's good enough. It's tasty. I need more practice to get the technique down, but I'll get there eventually. So, would you have to keep making this and enjoying it? Because it's a very tasty dish. I was surprised how some so few ingredients, how tasty it was. I'm adding some more pecorino on top for a garnish. And a lot more black pepper, fresh ground of course. And there you go, you got yourself a carb room there. I hope, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you enjoyed the food. Thank you for watching, have a nice day.